drop a comment and let me know if you dread teaching addition with regrouping. It's one of the more difficult standards for our young learners to master. And what about this? Have you ever had a parent come and complain because you taught it differently from how we learned as kids? I have been there. And while there's nothing wrong with the standard algorithm, we absolutely need to teach it. We need to expose our students to multiple strategies to give each student an opportunity to, for success because every student learns differently. But before we throw an abstract process at our students, such as the standard algorithm, it can be beneficial to introduce the concept in a more concrete way. So in this video, I am going to show you how to introduce addition with regrouping using the base 10 model. So be sure and stick with me until the end of the video too, because I have a really great freebie to share with you and I don't want you to miss it. So if you're ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit that follow button, and let's dive in and get started. So when it comes to adding higher numbers, it can involve the concept of regrouping. In order to regroup, your students need a really strong understanding of place value. Before we throw our kids into the standard algorithm, using base 10 blocks can be a really helpful visual tool to make the concept more concrete and easier to understand. Before introducing this concept, your students need to understand that having 10 ones is equivalent to having one tens block. If you have used my guided math curriculum, your students have already been exposed to this strategy inside unit number four, which was addition and subtraction without regrouping. So before we throw the concept of regrouping at them, we want to review the value of ones, tens, and hundred blocks and have our students practice composing and decomposing numbers using their base 10 blocks. So for example, the number 15, you could have them build the number 15 out using ones, and then we can model and show them how one, 10 ones can be exchanged for a tens block, and then you have one, 10, and five ones. After a quick refresh of place value, it's time to introduce regrouping. So to provide my students with even more support when first introducing this strategy, I actually give them a copy of this place value addition work mat. I place it inside of a dry erase sleeve so that way they can use a dry erase marker to solve their problems. So let me show you an example of how you would solve a regrouping problem using base 10 blocks. So let's start out using the example 68 plus 37. The first thing that I would have them do is write out the problem on their work mat. Then it's going to be time to show them how to build out both add-ins using their base 10 blocks. So the, in this first section right here, they are gonna build out their first add-in, which is the number 68. Then they're gonna build out the third add-in, which is 37. Once they have their add-ins built out on their work mat, now is a good time to ask them what they remember about adding two-digit numbers. Where do they start? They should already know that when adding multi-digit numbers that you start in the ones place. So they're gonna add the ones first. Now, one of the things that they might notice as they have built out their base 10 blocks or the, their numbers with base 10 blocks is that when you add the ones place first, so that's gonna be eight plus seven, eight plus seven equals 15. That is more than 10. So when we're adding and we add the ones place first, if our number is more than 10, then we have to regroup. So this would be a good time where we could access prior knowledge and say, okay, well, if we have more than 10 ones, can we make a trade for something? Can we exchange them for something that has an equivalent value? So this is when we would actually take 10 of our ones blocks and we are gonna exchange it for a tens block because the value is the same. 
So because eight plus seven is 15, I'm gonna move two up here. That makes 10. I'm gonna take this set of 10 ones and we are actually going to physically exchange these 10 ones, but now I have to replace them with something. That 10 doesn't just go away. We have to replace it with a tens block. So they're gonna take their 10 ones and they are going to exchange it and trade it out for another tens block. Now we can add and solve for the sum. So how many ones do we have left? We have five. Now, how many tens do we have? And it's really important for our students to understand that when we have a number in the tens place, such as like we have here, we have 10 tens blocks. And we might write the number 10 here to represent that, but our value is not 10. Our value is going to be 100. So they need to realize that just because there are tens, tens blocks, it doesn't mean that it represents the number 10. It's going to represent the value of 100. So then they can count and solve to check their answer. So we would count out loud together, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 100, and five. If you wanted to take it a step further, because you did end up with 10 tens, if you wanted, you could say, hey, can we make another trade? If we have tens, tens blocks, what can we exchange that out for? And they could trade it out for a hundred block if you would like for them to. Now, let me show you one more example using 36 plus 28. So remember the first thing we're gonna do is have our students build out the two add-ins using base 10 blocks. So first they're gonna build out the number 36. And then they're gonna build the number 28. Now we'll say, okay, what do we do first? First, we are going to add the ones place. So they are going to count and add their ones. Six plus eight equals 14. 14 is 10 or more, so what do we need to do? We need to regroup. When it's more than 10, we need to exchange. So I am going to make this equivalent to 10. And we are gonna actually take these 10 ones blocks and we are going to take them away and physically exchange them out for a tens block. Now we still have the number 14. We're just creating it a different way. Now we can count our tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. How many ones do we have left? Four, one, two, three, four. So our answer is 64. It is so important to emphasize the need to regroup when necessary to show how regrouping affects the place value of the digit shown. So encourage your students to use base 10 blocks to represent the regrouping process and explain their thinking out loud as they solve the problems. Now, in addition to using base 10 blocks, it's also really important to show them how to draw out this strategy using a pencil and paper. They won't always have access to manipulatives, but they will have access to a pencil and paper. So let me show you how you would show and model this strategy using your pencil. Now in this example that I am going to show you, we're actually going to be using an activity from my edition with regrouping unit. This is an interactive notebook activity that your kids could use to practice this particular strategy. And we call this draw it and solve it. So what they are going to do is underneath this first flap where it says draw it, they are going to actually draw out the base 10 blocks and then they will write the problem vertically under the solve it tab and solve for the sum. 
So let me show you how this would work. We have the number 78 plus 55. They're gonna lift up the draw a tab and first they're gonna draw out 78. Then they're gonna draw out the number 55 right below it and I try to teach them to draw like the tens blocks underneath each other and the ones blocks underneath each other. So now I'm going to ask, okay, if we are going to add, what is the first thing that we do first? Are we going to add the tens? Or are we going to add the ones? We're going to add the ones. So they might count all these up. They might know that eight plus five in their head, they might already know that it equals 13 and 13 is more than 10. When it's 10 or more, we need to regroup. So what they are gonna do is I teach them to circle out 10. So there's eight at the top. So they are gonna circle those 10 ones and they're gonna mark them out. They're gonna make them go away but they know that we still, that 10 has to go somewhere and we have to replace it. So then they are just going to draw another tens block. And now they can count to solve for the sum. So they can count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 141, 142, 143. So then under the solve it tab, they are gonna write their problem vertically equals 133. Overall, teaching addition with regrouping using base 10 blocks is an effective way to help our students understand place value and the regrouping process in a concrete and visual way. By using hands-on tools and providing plenty of opportunities for practice and discussion, you can help your students master this really important math concept. And since you've stuck with me until the end of the video, as promised, I have a freebie just for you. How would you like a done for you lesson plan when it comes to teaching addition with regrouping? Day one of my addition with regrouping unit is all about this strategy and I am giving it to you for free. Inside the PDF download, you'll receive the lesson plan and all of the activities included. Just like the ones that you just saw, you are going to get the addition place value map. You're gonna get a copy of the draw it and solve it place value interactive notebook activity that I just modeled. And you'll even get a copy of this anchor chart template that you might kind of see part of it, right? I cannot point, oh my goodness. Here, you guys, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so to grab this free edition with regrouping lesson plan, all you need to do is click on the link below this video and it's gonna take you to a blog post for you to grab these resources for you to have in your bank of ideas. It's gonna be sent straight to your inbox. Don't forget, leave me a comment below and let me know if you've grabbed this resource. And then I want you to come back and share with me how it went in your classroom because I would love to hear from you. I'll see you guys in the next video and you guys have a blessed one. Bye.